Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Professional Brotherhood Podcast. Hey, hey, Kara, what's going on? Hello, it's great to be back. It is great to be back, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this scheduling thing, I got to be honest with you, sucks balls. It really does. <sighs> Not life easy. Is, yeah, life is just, I don't know. I feel like we were in such a good place for like, I don't know, like a straight year and a half, like yeah, weekly, like cranking yeah. it out. And now I look back and I'm like, how the hell did we do that? You know, it just, well, I, I don't know. I mean, it was a lot of that time was COVID time. So I guess scheduling yep. was much easier during COVID time. And now everybody's kind of back to the, back to the thing. Yeah. Especially I think for you as, you know, as an instructor you're you didn't have that, any of that going on during COVID. Right. So, so now you're teaching your nights are, your nights are not as free because you're teaching. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've, had that conversation with a few people about how uh d during you know I, I'm, i've never really been a a tv person like there's a few things i like to watch you know and i'll if i get right. into a series i'll watch it but i've never been like a binge watch something right. kind of a guy and during covid i think i like binge watched more netflix series than i probably ever <laughs> have since the creation of netflix you know probably right. with probably like right. a lot of people did you know? I think it's the last time my Netflix was worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been crazy and things have been busy for both of us, which is whatever. It's good. Um, yep. I've, you know, I've explored some less traditional ways of, of doing this with some different equipment and just doing things on the fly versus the formal, you know, having to be at a desk, like, you know, being able to just record a phone call or whatever. But um haven't haven't committed to that yet so we'll see we'll right see. maybe right. maybe so you've been busy so the last time we we were just talking before i hit record i wanted to make sure that i had all your awards and accolades um <laughs> all squared away you know because you've been, you, you've been you've been busy and and deservingly so right um so let me let me see if i get this right all right so back in may you presented at the State Fire Academy, right? New York State Fire Academy, for those of you out of New York State. Um, and you want to just remind everybody what you were what you were doing up there? Because yeah, I had an awesome opportunity to present at the uh, public education conference this year, and I presented on juvenile fire setting intervention in the autism population. Um, so that was. It was really great opportunity to present it. I had a lot of very engaged learners in my session. So that always, it always makes it fun when people really yeah. want to be there and, you know, really want to learn. And we had lots of great questions and we actually got to use some of the hands-on tools that I use um, when I do interventions with kids that are on the autism spectrum that have exhibited um, fire setting behaviors. Yeah, so that's, that's I, cool. um, yeah, it was great. It was really exciting. And um, I did open up a little can of worms for myself because it's not a well studied or um, known about topic. And so okay. now I, I, I get a lot of <laughs> a lot of phone calls and requests, oh, to come out, which is awesome, because it's so important. Um, obviously, kids that are on, that have special needs are at an even higher risk for um, injuries. So we want to, you know, make sure that we're in, be inclusive with our public education as much as we can. So that was a great opportunity. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. And, and is it, isn't it amazing, um, how, when you, uh, um, go and present at an event that people actually want to be at, how much more fun it is when, when, you know, you have a, an audience that's like in it and engaged and, you know, wanting to do the thing. Oh, are you back? Did I, yeah. Did I lose you for a minute? Yeah. You, you froze up on me again. Oh. Sorry. And here I thought it was you. <laughs> no, it might've been me. <laughs> you know, I heard your voice, but your face stopped for a minute and I was like, all right, we're still good. No, I was, and then you I, stopped. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I was just saying how, isn't it like awesome when you, you go to present at, at a, an event like that, where people actually want to be there, like they're not forced yeah. to be there. They want to be yeah. there and they're in it and engaged. Yeah. You, know, you know, what great uh, back and forth and conversations. And I, I always find that 
in that type of environment, um, I learn just as much from oh. the people that are there as they hopefully are from me, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, it was awesome. And, uh, lots of great sessions that, you know, it's a, it's a really great conference. If you're in New York state, I think, you know, um, anybody can benefit from it because we all have public education to provide yeah. and participate in. So. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And then, and then you travel down to Texas to get the national, uh, national prevention award. Right. And then most recently, um, <laughs> I, oh man, my shorthand sucks. Look at this. Um, you got another award for prevention for what? What community prevention? Community prevention of the yeah. year, right? All right. Community prevention program of the year from SUNY Upstate. Good stuff. So like, yeah. Literally lighting it on fire out there. <laughs> awesome. Now congrats, you know congratulations. What? Well deserved. I know how much time and Thank effort you. you put into what you do. And uh yeah, congratulations. That's that's awesome. Thank you. Flissy nerds unite. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's, here's the plan for tonight. All right. A while ago. Uh, let's see. When was it? It was a while ago. I put out, I put out a post that um, we were going to be going through a bit of a, a relaunch and you and I have gone back and forth about, you know, how are we going to keep things going and how are we going to remain relevant? Cause we, we, we both agree. And, the input from a, a large number of our followers both agree that um, there's not there's not a lot of people out there tackling um, you know the volunteer the volunteer fire service um, right specifically right there's a lot of mm -hmm. there's a lot of podcasts and a lot of uh, you know YouTube channels and other things like that 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 kind of tread the line between career and volunteer and uh, mm -hmm. you know some of it might be not that I don't want to say it's career heavy but some of the things that are that are talked about might you know be more towards the staff the department right you know um mm -hmm. so so yeah so there's a lot of people that you know feel that there's a lot of a lot of the topics that we we get brought to us that we present and a lot of the guests that we've had on are very you know more specific to the volunteer service um which is kind of the goal right so yeah. We were back and forth about, you know, can we get back in the weekly thing or could, should we do bi-monthly or twice a month or whatever, whatever. We're just going to make it work where we can make it work and and hope that everybody enjoys it. But um, <laughs> so 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 I had put a post out there about how, you know, we were looking to relaunch and and, uh, uh, you know, we basically share some thoughts, share some comments, uh, things that you would like us to talk about. So that that post <laughs> time freaking flies doesn't it it's crazy feels like i just put that up like i don't know like two weeks ago and it was probably two months ago but um so i'm going back to the post and we did receive some comments so let me load those in uh let's see let me get newest first uh somebody dm'd me i'll have to go search for that um all right, let's start. Let's let's start with this one, um, and and you'll jump right. In. So here's here's what we discussed prior to prior to hitting the record button. Uh, there's quite a few topics on here. Some of them may be a bit of a deeper dive. Some of them could probably be an episode in their self. We'll we'll take them as they come. And if it's a two minute topic, it's a two minute topic. If it's a fifteen minute or or a fifty minute or uh, whatever it'll take up the take up all our time that we have tonight. So here's here's the first one and you'll I'm sure you'll like jumping right into this one. So all it says is recruitment and retention, fitness and job readiness. <laughs> so I'll let you jump on the fitness and the job readiness. You can okay. kick the, you can kick that one off and then I'll give my um short version of recruitment and retention because we've done multiple episodes on recruitment and retention right yeah and and, and yeah. not that not that i'm saying it's not an important topic it's an extremely important topic but i think just about everything we've talked about in the past is still relevant today so you can yeah. you could research back in the previous <clears throat> episodes and probably listen to any of those recruitment and retention episodes and still get valuable information out of them i think for sure for sure okay 
So you um, go ahead, hit us with your fitness and job readiness. Uh, yeah, I think that um, obviously it's a platform that I'm very passionate about, you know, yeah. because we we continue to lose good firemen, both career and volunteer um, every day, uh, every year, every month, wherever um, from medical and cardiac related deaths, mm -hmm. line of yeah. duty deaths. And um, that's impacted you personally. And mm -hmm. um, it's definitely had an impact on me. And, um, you know, as with everything that I do in the volunteer side and in, in my um, paid career, you know, prevention is everything. Sure. You know, it really is. And, and people don't like to talk about that. You know, um, it's kind of like a hot button issue. But fitness is really prevention for us as firefighters. Yeah. You know, we we're trying to get ahead of um of those injuries that can happen on the fire ground and get ahead of um, taking care of our health for when we are called upon and when we need it. The only real way to do that is to commit to um, paying attention to our fitness on a daily basis. And yeah. that's not to say that, you know, I recognize that my personal fitness journey, it might look very different from yours. And might look very different from you know my my partners down at the at the firehouse, sure. but it's not um, something where you have to go hard seven days a week and mm -hmm. only eat chicken, rice, and broccoli three meals a day. If you want to do that and that's what you're into, you can do that. But if you are a person who is going to say, "I want to take better care of my health," and I'm going to start by committing to a 20 minute walk a day, yeah. For, for four days, that's doing it. You know, you're, you're doing it. You have to, you have to start somewhere and then build on that consistency because sure. just like when we are stepping off the engine at, at a structure fire and we've got to go in and, and, and we're on the attack line or on primary search or whatever, yep. we can't count on adrenaline to get us through that whole event. It will get us through the initial attack phase. Mm -hmm. But it'll, and it might even get you through, you know, if you're in pretty good physical conditioning, it might get you through your first bottle, but eventually you're going to have to do overhaul. You're going to yeah. have to roll hose. You're going to have to pack up when you get back to the station, you're going to have to put everything back in service. Your fitness has to be endurance based and you have to have discipline to work on your fitness daily so that you can be ready when you're called upon. Because yeah. you cannot just count on adrenaline. No, hundred percent. And I think that most people realize that. Like, I think that most people in the volunteer, in the fire service in general, it's it doesn't matter where, right? In the fire service in general, realize when they are not, we'll say, fitness ready. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they, they know, they, they know that, you know, you know, when you feel a certain way, you know, when you're breathing heavy or, you, you know, or you, you know, you're, you're, you're sore the next day, or uh, you suck down the bottle and half yeah. the time you used to, you know, like, these are all signs that are telling you something. Right. Yeah. And, and I think, I think uh, the statement you made in the beginning says a lot in, in in anybody's fitness journey in general. Look, step outside the fire service for a minute. People look at influencers. <laughs> we we talked about we love that. that term. We, we, we love that we, term. We talked about that before we got on as well. But people talk at influencer. Look at influencers, right? And I know I experienced this when I when I was doing group fitness instruction, right? I would have people that would see me exercising on social media and be like, oh, I can't come to your class because I right. can't do that. And I'd be right. like, well, I don't expect you to do that. It took me, <laughs> it took me two years to be able to do years. this. You, you yeah. know, I said, yeah. I don't expect you to be able to do this. Just come and show up and it, like like move for 30 minutes and I'll help you do that, you know, but no, yeah. I don't expect you to be bouncing off the walls and doing, you know, you know, burpee jacks and all this other weird crap, right. Right. Just, just show right. up and move, you know? And yeah, I think we're, we're filled. 
we just like excuses. I think people like excuses, you know, and they don't like to accept the importance of that aspect um, of the job. I think that's true. And I, I think, and we always say, uh, you know, on this program, it's our whole platform is it doesn't matter if you're a career or volunteer and, yeah. and in fitness, it doesn't matter either. And I'll tell you why, because I get just as many career guys that are reaching out to me asking, how do I get started? I haven't done anything since Academy sure. regularly. You know, I haven't, um, you know, I, I work, I'm busy all day, you know, I'm on my feet, I'm whatever, but I'm not doing anything that is like specifically for conditioning my body for firefighter functional fitness. Sure. So I would wager that if you're in a volunteer department, um, depending on how your volunteer department runs, it may be even more important for you to focus on your fitness, because unlike at a, um, a time when you are set to be on duty, Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I'm good. I may be called to duty in this 24 hour period while I'm here at the firehouse as a volunteer, you may not have that benefit of ever knowing when you're going to be called. Sure. So, yeah, 100%. so when you are not paying attention to your fitness and when you're starting, if you're at the point where you're noticing that you are blowing through a bottle when you're at drill or you're taking a live fire class and you're like, oh my God, I, I'm dogging it the entire time. If you're already at that point, you've really got to take a hard look at, are you going to be able to adequately serve your community at a moment's notice when your body's not ready to do that? That's right. too much to ask of your body if you haven't been conditioning it. And the other, the other piece of that is um, if you if you are ready, if you are, if you are working out regularly and you're, and you're doing something to move your, move your body and get yourself ready, um, have you taken it to the next step up? Because complacency comes in a lot of forms. There's, there's the complacency of saying, well, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not in great shape. I'm not in as good a shape as I used to be. So I'm going to only take on roles at my volunteer department that don't require me to be in top physical conditioning. So that's, that's some complacency, right? Like, is it easier for you to take a step back from being, um, you know, from riding in the backseat of the engine and, you know, you're just going to do this role or just going to do that role in the volunteer service. We don't have enough people. Uh, we don't have enough people in the fire service regardless anymore in this country right. that you can pick and choose what role you're going to play. You may have yeah. a predominant role in your department, but if you're saying I would rather not become physically fit and be able to do any job that is asked of me, that's a whole different level of complacency. That's really going to bite you in the butt, you know, and yeah. it's, and it's, it's not fair to your team members and it's not fair to your community. Um, you and, know, and, and, you and, 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 and not to cut but, you off, but, but we, we also yeah. can't, you, you, we're not that there, there's no role that you can take on um, and be active that is a 100% stress-free and right. B not physical, right? Right. In <laughs> some, in some way, shape or form, or right? even if you're not putting on an SCBA and crawling into a building, even if you're a chauffeur, right? Being a chauffeur, right. the, the alarm is still going off in the middle of the night. Your heart rate mm -hmm. is still spiking when the alarm goes off in the middle of the night. You're racing down to the firehouse because you think it's a, a work in fire and your heart rate is still up. You still get in that apparatus. You still respond. You're still dragging hose lines, uh, yep. hooking up, hooking up water supply, you know, doing all these things that are still physical things. All right. So you're not putting an SCB in big deal, right? But you're still right. putting your, your body under stress and it doesn't take a, a, a physician to understand why so many firefighters die within 12 hours of, of working on an alarm, not at the alarm, right? Not right. at the fire scene. They go home, they go to sleep, or maybe they don't, right? And they die in their living room, right? Yeah. Why, why yeah. is that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's horrible. And if you look at like your example of a chauffeur, you're stepping up on and off platforms. You're, sure. uh, you know, you're using torque and pressure to tighten and loosen things like that right there is a recipe for injuries. If your body's not conditioned to those movements, 
you know, most firefighters get hurt. Uh, they hurt their backs, they hurt their ankles, they hurt their knees, they hurt their shoulders, you know, mm -hmm. all of those things, you can easily injure yourself if you, if your predominant role is a chauffeur. So yep. should you be doing functional fitness that requires you to step up and down? Should you be doing some strength training so that you are keeping those muscles limber? You know, mm -hmm. are you doing flexibility training? You're exactly right. It does not matter what your predominant role is. Yep. We all need to be focused on our fitness. And people ask me all this uh, a lot, you know, very frequently because I, I'm a morning workout person. I like to get up at, you know, 4.30 or 5 in the morning and go get a good workout in at the station and yep. and uh, and then start my day. People ask me, like, how can, you, how can you do that? I don't have the motivation. I don't have the motivation either. I hate it. Like, right, you know, right. some more, you know, some mornings I don't want to get up out of bed, especially this time of year when it's like zero dark, dark. 30 and yeah, 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 it's like super dark, yeah. you know, um, it's not motivation. It's discipline. It's yeah. saying I am going to do this every day, yeah. you know, and if you're, if you can do it three days a week for 20 minutes, that's great. Like you got to start somewhere, but you start and then you have to have that consistency and discipline to continue with it, to recognize yeah. that it's it's larger than yourself. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I'll tell you what really burns my ass is, is, is people that, you know, when, when something bad happens, especially when something bad happens in right in your backyard and look, we had the line of duty here in 2022, right. Young guy. Um, we just, we just had a firematic funeral uh, a, a, a few weeks ago, another young guy, mid forties, right. Wasn't a line of duty, but, but, you know, he had a heart attack on his, basically on his front porch, you know, like people have these wake up calls for a minute, you know, they're yeah. like, oh, you know, it's so it's terrible. I can't believe that happened, you know, and like, oh, I took a real good look in the mirror and I'm going to make some changes and not everybody. But I think for the most part. That fades more often than not. And, and it's a, it's a shame. Like, I, I, you know, you really got to look at these things and be like, Hey, you know, if, you know, do you want to be a statistic? Do you want to be, you know, do you want to suffer the same fate as somebody that maybe you knew, or right. do you want to, do you want to make a change for the better? And, you know, be around longer for, forget the fire service for, you know, right. for, 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 for your family, for your, you know, for your loved ones, for whatever's important to you, you know? Yeah. Um, for whatever's going to come for in your life right. that you don't even know about yet. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. So yeah. All right. I think that, I think we, I think we hammered that one. What do you think? Yes. Yes. I think so. What's right. the, what's the next hot topic on? All right. I'm going to, I think we're going to hit recruitment and retention on a couple of these things. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to dive into uh, recruitment and retention. I'm going to jump into this one here. Um, I think this is a good one. It says the proby shouldn't be the one setting the standard just because you've been on for a long time. Doesn't give you the right to only be negative. Um, whenever that, whether that be about calls, meetings, threatening to quit every time you're at the firehouse, giving others shit because they don't give a damn about what they are doing. It creates a negative culture, breeds more people with a bad attitude towards the department. Ooh, that's spicy. Woo! <laughs> that sounds, that sounds like, uh, maybe that there's a targeted issue going on <laughs> yeah i definitely think there's a targeted issue going on so let's start with the beginning the, the proby shouldn't be the one setting the standard yeah 100 percent. all right so there's there's this can tie into a few topics that we've talked about right mm -hmm. um uh, i know people that have heard me talk on the show or heard me talk outside the show whether in a seminar or teaching or whatever um you know we talk about standards and we talk about minimum standards well, mm -hmm. they're minimum standards for a reason. Any anybody that's setting their sights on a minimum standard, right, is gonna do what? Just just the bare minimum, right? That's yep. that's that's a that's a a target to shoot for, but that's not really the target we should be shooting for, right? We should be shooting right. to be better than the minimum standard, to be above the minimum standard. Um, I think some of these smaller volunteer departments have issues with um a, a mix of 
tradition and the way it's always been done and some senior men or old timers, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call them. And, and, you know, new versus old. And, and I think there's, you got to learn to be able to kind of walk that tightrope with, with, with some thinking new, new versus old. I don't, uh, you know, I think the fire service is rich in tradition, obviously, and tradition is extremely important to the fire service. Um, but I think in a lot of these smaller departments, you've, you're sending, you're sending at least in New York. And again, we, we can only really speak for New York, right? We're sending firefighters to get trained in New York, going through a training program that is light years ahead of what it was 25, 30 years ago. Right? right. And a lot of our old timers, if they haven't stayed up with, you know, the training or gone to the local training center to help out with a firefighter one or whatever, you know, they don't know. They don't know what's being taught today. And it's just such a more all encompassing program than it used to be that I think the kids are coming back kids. I, I think the probation, <laughs> the probationary members are coming back with a lot more information that they used to than they used to. Right. And if they're coming back into a firehouse, it's kind of set in its ways and the minimum standard is okay. Or we're working based on standards from 25 years ago. I think that's where a lot of the problem comes in, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think that, um, you know, there was a, a good point that the pro we shouldn't be setting the, the tone or the standard. I think part of it too is, I know when we get uh, new firefighters in and, and they're taking their classes and they're, they're all in and they, you know, they want to yeah. be on every call and everything like that. For myself, I find that really energizing. You yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you know, like we we get it. So we're going on the same, you know, alarms all the time at the same house, or we're going to the same EMS call, the same address all the time. So you do have you do have a little bit of, of that 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 gets built up over the years if you've been a practicing firefighter for any mm -hmm. number of years. Yeah. But you get somebody fresh in that is seeing it with brand new eyes. To me, and I know to the people that I work very closely with that like energizes us you know we, we're always like exchanging like a smile with each other you know that like oh my gosh look how into it this kid is or this guy is or whatever um you know I think that that's awesome because if you're seeing it through their eyes and you get reinvigorated by their enthusiasm and their interest and their their willingness to learn yeah that is a great a great thing to carry through your house right Sure. But I do think that there are is the other side of it where you have the people that the tradition and the culture is to pat that down, yes. right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, we're we're supposed to like pat the probies down and and treat them like they're they're stupid for being excited about it, right? You know, and I think that's the wrong move because mm -hmm. it does come across. I don't know that it's the, it the, the, the intent is to be negative, but it does come across as being very negative and that you shouldn't be excited and you shouldn't be interested and you shouldn't be willing to learn. Right. So that sets a different tone, right? You have the, the mm -hmm. group over here where people are like, yes, I remember how excited I was, you know, for my, when I, you know, yeah. got out of my IFO and I, I first made the engine, you know, I, I know that feeling. That's so amazing. I, you know, I want to feel like that again too. And then you have this other group that's like, calm down. It's nothing to be excited about. Like, you know, just that whole like blah attitude. Right, 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 right. Whichever, whatever you can have, it's going to be contagious either way. You can I have think, the positivity and excitement be contagious, or you can have the the negativity and like the bad attitude about it be contagious. Either one. Right, right, right. And and I, and I do think there is there is definitely some give and take. Like you you want to you you want to keep that excitement. Like I want to keep yeah new members at that level. Right, right. I want them to be excited. I want them to come around. I want them to you know want to change the world. Right. Yeah. But I also remind, try to remind, you, you know, the, the, 
probationary level, or you don't really see it, I don't think as much at the probationary level, but once they start to develop and maybe start thinking about like a, a lower line officer spot or whatever, and they start <laughs> start going to get some of that, you know, that basic fire officer training. And now all of a sudden they're like, well, we got to change this. We got to change this. We got to do this. Yeah. We got to do that. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, you guys, this is where you kind of got to slow your roll, right? Like yes. pick, like pick your battles, like pick a thing, whatever that thing may be. You can't come in and change everything at the same time, right? Like right. If, if there's some things that are lacking, you got to learn how to present those things. You got to learn how to, um, you know, get support for the things that you might want to change. You can't just change things for the sake of freaking changing them. Like you got to have some, like, you know, you got to have some backup and some information and, and why maybe we need to update. So I do think there's a little, there's definitely some give and take there. Um, but I think when it, you know, like when it comes to the, to the, the probie being um, all in it, you know, and excited that if you've got people in your agency kind of beating that down, um, that sucks. Yeah, that definitely, it definitely does. And I agree. I think that, um, you know, I try to make a bridge between the sure. two. Like I try yep. to encourage our our new members to go to our, our older members and ask them about why they got started in the fire service and what was it like for them when they yeah. first started and that kind of thing. Because if they're asking for that information, it kind of sets that tone that I respect you and I respect what you did before me and I want to know about it and learn about it. Mm -hmm. And it accomplishes a little bit about what you're saying too, is if they do decide to move into a line officer position, they have, first of all, hopefully made a collaboration with some of the old timers about, you know, how things used to be and, and that they showed an interest and they cared about what they thought and they want to learn from that aspect too. And then the other piece of it is um, it's a lot harder to smush someone down when they're doing exactly what you want them to do, you know, yeah. because they, the, the people that have been in for the, for a long time, they want to be heard and they want to be, you know, recognized as a valued member of the team and not pushed aside by new training and, and new people and all that stuff. So if you're getting the new people to go directly to them and say, Hey, I want to, I want to hear from you. Sometimes you can nip some of that in the bud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, and and a lot of times organizations need to do a better job of involving everybody, right? Bringing everybody yes. in to be involved in things. I say it all the time. I'm I'm ridiculously fortunate at my firehouse because when when we have, you know, when we do a drill, we have the guys that are always there. Right. We, and yep. whether it's new members, older members, uh, you know, somewhere in the middle, somewhere, you know, you've got that group that always shows up and and the, the, the senior the senior men around the firehouse that show up. And regardless of whether they're still interior or they're a chauffeur or they just do fire police or they do some other, you know, um, exterior role, but will still show up. And if they can't partake, listen and learn and, you know and have a good attitude about it, that, right. that is, it's doing so many things, right? It's getting everybody together and everybody, you know, appreciates everybody more that way. And I think it shows, you know, it shows the, the probationary members, you know, that, that they're all in, you know, that they're, yep. that, they, that they actually care. And it doesn't matter that oh, maybe this isn't their role anymore, but they still want to know, like what your role is right and and right. learn more about your role so they can relate to it and i and i think that's extremely important and valuable and that's you know i say it over and over again that's why mentorship is so important and formal mentoring programs are yeah. super important and valuable yeah because if you can 100%. pair somebody up with a, a senior man it it is so good for everybody yeah 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 <laughs> you know True. the officers the officers don't have to do everything and shouldn't be doing everything yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's not on my list. <laughs> it should, maybe it should be. All right. Here's, here, here's the next one. Um, this one starts off with big question. Why is there such a big problem with staffing? Why is the career side trying to get rid of volunteers? 
Uh, all right. Let's kick this one off. I don't know. I mean, I, I like you say, and I say, I can't speak outside of my experience in New York State. Right. I, where I'm from in the area that I work in, um, both for my paid job that I do and for my volunteer firefighting, I don't experience career people that are in our area, which there aren't a lot of career departments, frankly. Right. I don't see them trying to get rid of us. Right. Um, so I, I can't say, I mean, we, we, we work with career people as our, as you know, their first mutual aid company, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, and they're very happy to have us coming. You know, we train with them. We train, we right. all train together, you know, so I, I can't speak to that as being a broad thing that's happening. I can see probably in big cities or um, counties that have paid firefighters and the volunteers are are there but maybe are dwindling in numbers or whatever mm -hmm. i can see maybe um career departments saying let's just get rid of them or let's just absorb them or whatever um i don't know i don't know what your experience has been with that where you are but i i don't have that experience my county has one combination department and when i say combination it, you know there's I think seven guys on, you know, that are on the career side now, six. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's six, maybe it's eight. I, I I lost track, but no, it's not. You know, when I look at this issue, I, first of all, I, I would, I'd like to know where the question is coming from, right? Yeah, why, is the career, yeah. why is the career side trying to get rid of volunteers? Um, right. I think if you're basing that question on social media, that's a problem, right? If you're, yeah. if you're looking at the keyboard warriors that are commenting on hitting it hard from the yard and spot the vile chief and all these other pages that are just, you know, like, first of all, you don't even know if they're really firefighters, period. Right. right? Yeah. They, you have no they, idea who they are. You don't know who they are, what they're doing, wh whatever, who, you know? Um, right. But I, I do think you have to look, you have to look at that question you know, with, with, with an open set of, you know, eyes, Be because yeah. there's so much that, you know, if you're coming from a predominantly career area, right. Mm -hmm. If you grew up in the five boroughs of New York and your grandfather, <laughs> your grandfather was on the FDNY and your father was on the FDNY and now you're on the FDNY and you know, nothing about volunteer fire service and your union through and through, right? I don't mm -hmm. care if you're a union firefighter or you're a union uh, pipe fitter or you're a right. Union welder, right? Like you, people that are in a union and and believe in unions, right? Feel that people that are not in the union doing that same job are what? scabs right yeah. like if if the if ups had a walkout tomorrow and they brought in a bunch of non-union people to drive their trucks those people would be scabs right the drivers wouldn't be right. happy about it so if so if you grew up in that setting right mm -hmm. i could understand how you might feel that in certain parts of the world that that maybe the the career side is trying to push out the volunteer side but you know there's so many areas that a could not afford to be fully, fully right. Career, right. Um, yeah. But, but, you know, looking, looking on the volunteer side, right. Let's be honest here. There are some volunteer companies that are barely holding on, right. Mm -hmm. Barely holding 100%. on, barely get an engine out the door. Right. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. But yet they'll say, you know, but they'll bitch and moan about, Oh, the career side is trying to take us over. Well, well, guess what? You know what? If you can't, if your organization can't do the job anymore, right? Right. You, there still needs to be fire protection. And there's only a few avenues to, to get fire protection, right? So let's, if you're in a combination department and the career numbers keep going up because the volunteer numbers keep going down. Well, whose fault is that? Right. Is, right. is it, is it the volunteers fault because they didn't do a better job of 
of creating new members and creating new leaders and and recruiting and retaining and or maybe it's just a shit part of the world where they've got you know they've got no volunteer pool i don't i don't know that plays into it too you know but but you know if you're in one of those companies that's barely getting an engine out the door and you refuse to look at anything else eventually something is going to have to change right and mm -hmm. and really the only thing that can change is that area is going to need to put on some sort of paid staff maybe it's not fully career maybe it's paid on call or whatever or we're going to have to consolidate, right? right. And yeah. even when you mentioned consolidation to some volunteer departments, are like, oh, oh, no, my God, we, we can't consolidate. Why not? Why can't you right. consolidate? You've got a township that has seven departments with 25 different pieces of fire apparatus. And out of the seven departments, you're lucky if you can get two pieces of fire apparatus out the door in the middle of the day. If you consolidated right. all that equipment and all that money into one district, wouldn't you be better off? Wouldn't you be better serving the public that you say that you're there to serve in the first place? Right. But why yeah, don't they want to? Why don't they want to talk consolidation? Oh, because you know I might not be able to be the chief anymore. Somebody else might have to be the chief, right. or we might have to give up some leadership. We might lose a president or two. You know. You know what I mean? I'm right. Yeah. I think what we're talking about here is lack of introspection. Yeah, yeah. If you cannot look within your department and look within your the way you practice as firemen, that's a big problem. And you are going to continue to have problems moving forward. I mean, it's the whole platform of our podcast is professionalism, right? Sure. So just like we're saying, you can't get a piece of apparatus out or, or you don't have, you know, you um, don't have the right staffing for the type of calls that you're getting. Mm -hmm. If you, if you aren't willing to look at that and say something needs to change, how are you helping your community? Cause isn't that really what we're supposed to be doing? 100%. And if you are, you know, like we, we talk about it all the time. And like when, when, when you and, um, and Tom do the, the seminar, we talk about like, if you're showing up and you don't have your PPE on and you're not, you don't know what to do. You, you have people that don't know how to run command. You, you're not coming off as professional. You're not actually providing the service that the community is looking for. And you can't recognize that. That's a problem. It, is it truly that the career side is forcing you out? Or is it that you have not looked at yourself as a department and as, as firemen to say, are we doing this correctly and in a way that makes the public confident in us Yeah, and our ability to do the job? It's introspection. Are you looking at yourself? Yeah. And, 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 and we've talked about this over and over again. We've, we talked about it as to why, you know, what kind of inspired me to kick off this podcast in, in the, in, in the first place. Right. Um, look, there are lazy shit bags on both sides of the fence. Oh, I, for I, don't, sure. I don't care what it is, right? There are plenty yeah. and any any career fireman that tells you they don't have somebody on their job that would rather be sitting in the easy chair watching television than out training, they're lying to you, right? So oh, so sure. so they know that, you know on the career side they know they have people that that are you know just barely scraping by to get in their 20 so they can get the hell out, right? And, yep. and it's the same thing on the volunteer side, right? There's people that have an excuse for everything. They complain about everything that, you know, talk about, oh, the career, this, the career, that. And then you've got the you know career guys that are like, oh, the volunteers, this, the volunteers, that, it, you know, it's, it's bullshit. Right. And yep. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't hear it very often. And, and look, and I'm fortunate enough to be in in a in a place where, you know, there's plenty of times where I'm standing up and teaching in front of a room of combined career and volunteer firefighters and never in, you know, in in my 20 years have I had somebody come up to me and be like, oh, you're a volunteer. Never. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you know what, if you take the job seriously and you educate yourself and you present yourself professionally and you know what you're talking about um, and you and you're good at the job and you're a professional like we always talk about, regardless of what side of the 
paid fence you come, whether you're getting the paycheck or not, people are going to respect you, right? Yep. And they're and 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 a squared away volunteer department is going to get respect. Yeah. If you're a bunch of huckleberries in a fire truck, right, that show up, you know, with your cut off shirts on and you're dipping your lip, all right, and you're freaking spittoon in your hand, right, and you don't know how to do the job. Well, mm-hmm. guess what? You're going to take some shit and deservingly so, in my opinion. Right. 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 Yeah. This isn't a yeah. game, right? This isn't no. 1970. This isn't, you know, Uncle Goober and the, you know, the whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not a club. No. no you know, not a club. I mean, that's the thing. It's job. not, it's not a club. It's a, it's a job that you're not drawing a paycheck for. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can fit one more in here. Um, water supply. Um, uh, staffing challenges for them mentality. I think we kind of hit on that a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. de- decline of volunteerism. Um, you know, I think we talk about decline of volunteerism, you know, quite a bit and, and we've probably already hit on a couple of things tonight. Um, and that, that's probably a good one to come back for, uh, you know, for a, a, a longer episode, you know, decline of volunteerism. I, you know, I think a lot of, in, in my, in the experience that I've had and that I see, I think there's a lot of things that, that, that cause decline of volunteerism. Right. And mm-hmm. uh, maybe some of it we can't control. Right. And and we've talked about this on previous podcasts. We talk about it in the seminar. It's it's a hot topic at all the different, you know, state agencies and organizations and 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 stuff. Um sure, a big part of the decline of volunteerism is the change in um just just people's change in life, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. You know, Tommy, Tommy, I, I definitely won't hit on it the way he does when, when he talks about, um, yeah. you know, you go back to the, the sixties and the seventies, you know, when, you know, it was, uh, uh, you know, a, a family where, you know, you know, dad served in the Vietnam war and was, was in the service and came home and got a job and mom was, you know, maybe stay at home, probably stay at home, maybe not. Right. right? As we got into the late seventies and eighties and, you know, and, and you, you lived in a community and you served in a community and, and you worked in a community, you know, and, you know, you lived on a single salary. How many yep. people do you know that live on a single salary now, right? Married or not, family or not, right? How many single people do you know that live on a single salary, right? That it's that's working one job. And if they are living on a single salary, working one job, they're probably working 60 hours a week or more, right? So right. the last thing that they might want to do is come home and then go, you know, do essentially what we're saying is another job, right? Because it is um, volunteering. So, you know, I think just society has played a large role in volunteerism, right? I think that's a big part of it. And then I think some of our organizations not adapting to society is another big problem that affects volunteerism. And how many people do you know that live and work in the same town? A hundred. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. You know, because uh, what what happened, you know, we had the industrial revolution and the manufacturing and everybody was making stuff and you worked at the factory in town. You know, you came home from war and you worked in the factory in town or you worked for your Department of Public Works or you or whatever. But you you lived and worked in the same space. Now people are commuting 45 minutes, an hour away. So you're not even in the community that you would be volunteering to firefight in, the, you know, because you're working someplace else, you know, you're working out of town. And, and like you said, if you're going to make it, you're working 50, 60 hours, and then you've got to commute, yeah. you know, so you're gone. And I just had an interesting conversation with Tim Ahern, who we've had on the program twice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, at the firehouse the other day. Um, and I, I just always, always love talking to Tim, but yeah. um, uh, we were talking about, about, is it really, 
a decline in volunteerism. And I think what I'm seeing from what I see in my community is people are still pretty civic minded, but because of their work and life balances and the way that society has shifted, the things that they're volunteering and giving their time to have to include, if they have a young family, their children. So they may be volunteering their time um, to be a troop leader or coach ASO soccer or something like that. Yeah. Coach soccer, um, you know, be on the, on the PTA or be on the preschool board or whatever it is. I still see that people are taking roles like that. They're Mm -hmm. still civic minded people out there, but they have to, in order to make it all work, because there's such long distance commutes and because of all the hours that both parents are working or whatever, if you're in a two parent household, um, the volunteer time that you're giving has to be relevant to the status that your life is going on Mm -hmm. right now. So if you are paying attention to that in your community, you can start to attract people that maybe as their kids move into middle school, and are a little bit more autonomous and they don't necessarily want their parents to be standing at the sideline for every practice right? or sports thing, or, and they don't want their parents to volunteer at the school anymore. Yeah, like those, sure. those are the demographics and the folks that we should be looking at for recruitment and retention to say, Hey, you know, um, do you have a little bit of time that you could give, you know, are you interested in, in being a, an EMT? Are you interested in mm. being a firefighter? You know, you have to kind of shift and not look for the people that are, um, you know, just starting out in their work and have young families, you have to look more towards the other folks that maybe, hey, yeah, I I can maybe do that now. You know, my kids are a little bit older. They don't want to hang out with me. They don't care if I'm around unless they need food or a ride. Those are the people that you should be targeting. So I think to your point, you have to make a shift to look for those people and seek out the people that are in that realm Mm-hmm. that still want to be civic minded. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, it's there's a lot that goes into that. I don't I don't think that um I think volunteerism has definitely changed, right? But we have to adapt with that change, right? Yeah. And and yeah. and you and I both know there are plenty of organizations out there that just refuse to adapt, right? They have refused to adapt the, the, the basics of, you know, their minimum standards to be a member, right. Right. That were written 25 years ago, right. You, you, you can't do that. Right. Uh, Communities change in 25 years. I mean, my community around me has changed drastically in 25 years. Right. And there, and there's, there's organizations whose population has change tremendously in the last five to 10 years. Right. So they're seeing a different type of, they're seeing a different type of person from different, uh, different backgrounds coming in to volunteer and some of the, the traditional things that they have done probably since the inception of their organization, they need to start looking to change some of those things to adapt to the community that is willing to serve for them. Or, or, or they're going to be non-existent, right? I mean, it's, right. it's, yeah. So there's, so there's a lot of things that, you know, we as organizations uh, need to look at when it, when it comes to volunteerism, uh, you know, and some people say, oh, well, we just can't, we just can't take or keep anybody. Look, I understand we got to have, we just said it earlier. We, we got to have standards. We got to yeah. have minimum standards. We have to have training standards, right? If if somebody's going to show up to the firehouse and respond on emergencies, they, they have to have core competency in the jobs that they're doing, right? But can we yeah. adjust things to give them that core competency where we're not pushing them out the door because they can't you know, they can't accomplish what they need to accomplish because, you know, we've got a set of rules and regulations on the books that were meant for, you know, 1985. Right. Right. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta be able to adapt. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I think, uh, I think we've, I think we've hit on a few good topics. Uh, Hopefully, uh, hopefully a few of the uh, listeners that commented on our Instagram feed will hear this episode and, uh, 
got something out of it. Um, yeah. Any any parting thoughts? Um, you know, I I think it's great that we're back, and hopefully we can get back into a little bit of a groove and mm -hmm. um, put out some episodes regularly. And I I think it's awesome when people give us feedback and talk about the things that they uh, want to hear from us. You know, that's that's always great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we truly appreciate the feedback. I mean, uh, we got quite a bit of it on that post and, uh, and we, we, we generally do when we ask. So, so those of you that, that have stuck with us or are new to the show and have been catching up because we've gotten a few of those, uh, those comments, um, in the past couple months as well, you know, people just found the podcast and, uh, you know, started from episode one and kind of working their, working their way through, which is always, always cool to hear. Um, but yeah, uh, if, if, if anybody out there listening has, uh, a suggestion for a topic that maybe we have not hit on before, or, uh, you know, of a good guest maybe that, that is, uh, well-versed in any of the topics that we talked about that you think might be, uh, relevant to the platform and, and a good person to come on and, uh, share some, uh, thoughts with us, feel free to, um, pass those names uh pass those names forward to either one of us and uh yeah we're looking forward to it looking forward to some good stuff ahead that's right all right cool well Kara, thank you as always yeah and uh everybody stay safe and we'll uh you'll hear from us again soon we promise <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> all right take care take care bye-bye